Welcome to this uh, special webinar presented by M Filterate in association with Exchange for Media. As we all know, uh, there is a lot of you know push towards digital, and if we talk about the last hundred plus days, especially, all advertising is going digital. And marketers, in my conversation with various marketers, leading brands, they've always said that you know digital is the way forward. While digital is the way forward, at the same time, there is another issue the issue of making sure that in these times when the business sentiment is a bit challenging, every dollar spent, the bank, you get the maximum bang for the buck as you call it. You know, how do you ensure that every dollar spent online gives you the maximum mileage? That is a broad overview of the subject that we'll be discussing. The subject for today is conserving online ad dollars from spill, what marketers need to know, decoding the new playbook. And with, uh, with me today, uh, there's an esteemed panel. Speakers include uh, Shekhar Sharma, VP Digital Group M. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sharma. Uh, Prasad, uh, uh, Prasad Shijali, founder and CEO, uh, Logic Serve Digital. Uh, Vishal Chinchankar, uh, Chief Digital Officer, Madison. Gautam Save, VP Technology Performix, India. And the session chair uh, today is uh, Ron Pullman, Principal Advisor, M. Filtere. So before I proceed, I want to hand it over to Ron, uh, who would take you through the discussion and ask the questions. Uh, I will come in between. I'll play my role whenever required. Over to you, Ron, and all the best. Thank you, Ron. And, uh, and thank you, everybody, uh, and welcome to, to all of you that are joining us today live. Um, it's, it's great to have you with us. I think the subject is universal, um, and I know that during these difficult times, it's even more pressing on our, our operations as advertisers and agencies, uh, specifically, you know, how can we conserve our, our resources in many ways that have been reduced in, in digital um, and prevent leakage, prevent spill, in unwanted areas. Um, we have, I think, the best panel I've ever worked with in this webinar. Um, and I think that if you can bear with us for the next hour, there's gonna be a lot of value uh, and insights from what they have to share with you. I'm gonna keep my role in this to a minimum, uh, essentially the master timekeeper. I hope I do a good job at that. But I do wanna start by, um, by highlighting a few of the major changes that have happened uh, just in the first half of this year. It's been an epic year for changes. Uh, it started with Google in, the, uh, in January announcing it's phasing out support for third-party cookies, and that sent shockwaves through the industry. Um, and also uh, in India, more closer to home, uh, Reliance Geo uh, has raised uh, in, in the very recent time $20 billion from 11 investors, which is going to allow them to go deeper into mobile and also enter uh, e-commerce in a very meaningful way. So but that's having an impact um, that is going to really uh, be important for us as marketers and advertisers and agencies in India to, to work with uh, and to take, uh, see this as an opportunity going forward. Um, there's also this uh, emergence of boycotting um, uh, with Facebook, um, which we hadn't thought would happen ever. Uh, but finally it has. Um, and then uh, Apple announced uh, an, an a more technical announcement, which many uh, ha had really not noticed, but in the iOS 14 privacy and IDFA uh, opt-in changes have been uh, announced for September. So no longer will customers, consumers be searching for ways to opt out of advertising. Advertising will be an opt-in feature um, on iPhones. Um, and then uh, what we're seeing is a continuation of a trend uh, in the preference of our, our consumers and customers for uh, mobile as the device of choice. Um, the, the pandemic has made that even more valuable. It was a trend that was underway uh, long before we were hit by the pandemic, um, but it's here to stay. And we have to think of, again of opportunities that these changes present. That's gonna be a theme in our discussion today. Opportunities to uh, get more from our, our media investment, uh, get more valuable engagements uh, with the, the consumers we are trying to attract, 
um, not only at the surface, but throughout the customer journey, right down to the deepest part of the purchase funnel. Um, so there's, there's always going to be opportunity to change, and there's always going to be change. Change is a constant. And at the same time, uh, the, the agencies, uh, who I'm very sympathetic with in this situation, um, must continue to deliver the highest possible ROI on the advertiser's media investment. So we're going to talk uh, in two waves of questions. Uh, we're going to go through the panel. Uh, you'll see a diverse uh, and, and also convergent point of view from our panelists. Um, but again, I hope that you find uh, what they have to say to be valuable for your everyday um, work in, in marketing and, and media. Um, so let's, let's begin. Um, the first question that we're going to focus on is the digital playbook. And we throw those two words around very freely. Um, and just to, for the benefit of the audience, uh, for those who may not understand what we mean by that, um, and, and no, no disrespect to those who do, um, we're talking about the, the strategies and the tactics that an agency uh, will recommend and use. And, and this playbook evolves with each campaign. It improves with each campaign. And when we think of the changes that I just mentioned, um, there's a need to look at our playbook very carefully to see how we might take advantage of these changes. So th the first question, therefore, is simply to ask um, our participants as we warm up for this discussion, um, how have these changes and how has this uh, in continuous demand for, for better results in the media investment affected their playbook? What's working and what's not working? Um, I'd first like to throw the ball to... Sorry, leaving the suspense. Uh, Shikara Sharma. Thank you. And, and remember, guys, you've got like five minutes for this question. Um, you can say a lot in five minutes. I, I've proven that point already. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ron. I hope I'm audible. I hope all uh, attendees and my panel panelists are keeping safe. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in a hot and humid uh, Delhi. I stay in Noida and uh, and it's been a pleasure to be part of this industry, which is, uh, I'll straight, live, straight away get into the uh, perspective. It's all the way been very challenging and very exciting to be part of this roller coaster journey on digital, uh, especially the fact that as Ron had rightly put, uh, the digital industry has always been uh, at the uh, cutting, bleeding edge of disruption. When I mean by that, when, you, I go back to them four years back when everything was actually disrupted completely, getting into a very mobile centric approach. We've had instances uh, where marketers were actually quick to shut up, shut that entire desktop. So, uh, so this has been an ever changing ecosystem all the time. And uh, every uh, two years, every one year, there have been a change and the new rule books being written. So I would like to actually place this around uh, this entire concept of digital transformation as a journey, as a consumer journey, as where, especially uh, what is it for us as agencies, uh, considering that I have my fellow uh, industri industrial friends also here, um, on in terms of how do we navigate through this entire ecosystem, especially this entire post-pandemic, uh, uh, post-COVID situation where we are. So uh, very quickly, I would like to actually put it into three broad pillars and some of them which may not be uh, quite new to you, but the way you look at it from the perspective, what you see it uh, will be very different. For, uh, I would like to put it in uh, rather three C's uh, uh, in terms of content, context and connections uh, from an overall framework approach, uh, if you may like. Uh, content whenever we, uh, you have any consumer talking to a brand or a client in whatever form, whether he's actually there navigating through an e-shelf on a marketplace or whether he's actually talking to you onto your call center, whether he's watching a video to interacting uh, to you with a voice or interacting on your assets through a chat bot, all these forms as a content. What's extremely critical in this era is to actually 
get an ever uh, changing dynamics in terms of what the what the shape of the content is if you were to actually look at it everything is getting very utilitarian how is it that i this is uh, we we all know that it's all raised to the center uh, how do i make every life meaningful for my users for my consumers that's exactly the first uh, key pillar is going to be in terms of the content and all the more uh, because of the fact that we are uh, the moment we have any this is like a i call it as a uh, syndrome of a dog tail you know the moment you keep on spending monies you uh, it's it's the dog dog tail is wagging the moment you uh, straight the moment you stop the spends uh, it's actually going goes back to its own circle so uh, it's a very interesting trend and all the more uh, going back to this entire topic in itself where we are talking about preventing leakages and spillovers how do we uh, make sure that each and every content is made meaningful uh, there is uh, how do we navigate from a linear approach to a very dynamic centric approach as far as consumer journey is concerned as far as digital is concerned that's the that's the first key uh, to this entire change in the new new playbook uh, post covid especially second is in, in terms of the context context in terms of how we are interacting with our consumers if i if i may you may like some of them you are you are all quite familiar with digital marketing some of them not i i assume that there are mixed bags of attendees uh, when you talk of spillovers one of the key things is what makes this entire digital ecosystem very fascinating it's is accountability when i mean by accountability it's about the kind of sharp shooting that you can actually do on your consumers how we will how you will be able to segment your consumers in its right uh, in the way you want to address how is it that you want to profile your consumers how do you want to personalize this this is not one to many it's one to one when you are talking of digital so that's that's to me is the second c which is the context uh, in terms of how do i make sure that i stay relevant for each and every penny being spent third not last but not the least is connections how do i create each and every touch points i spoke to you about the call center bit in terms of where uh, uh, any any conversation which is happening every touch point is a content for you every conversation is a content for the for the client how as agencies we are able to navigate this better for our consumers how do we make sure that we activate the appropriate channels or platforms or touch points to make sure that we justify all the rois so uh, i would like to rest it with this entire concept of making sure that we take our clients through our digital transformation journey and it's in definitely in accountable for the agencies to actually do so partner them and to say of course stay all the more relevant during this time of taking off three c's of content context and connections yeah okay. thank you, thank you. And that was reasonably close to five minutes. Thank you for that as well. Um, a tough subject to cover in such a short time. Um, next, Prasad, are you available to jump into the fray? Thank you very much, uh, Shekhar. Good to uh, good to hear about three Cs. Uh, but before I start, uh, I think one of the thing which comes to my mind is that before before I as a marketer or an agency head or a CEO or a founder or whatever I am, I'm a consumer myself. And if you look back to that. mid of march what has happened to india uh, you know a typical cobbler ross model where in, in the life started with a shock it can't happen okay to denial okay to frustration to depression to experimentation and you know now lots of that stuff and now most of us i suppose are into that um, uh, you know experimentation and probably integration phase that we talk about okay so that has happened as a consumer uh, that happened to me and then how has that got reflected me as a agency probably that is where um, i would uh, like to uh, you know talk about um so if you see um, me as a consumer okay there are a few trends that i see apart from what ron has talked about which has happened you know third third party party cookies will not be uh, if uh, will not be read um, lots of stuff geo happening uh, facebook happening and everything okay one of the thing which has happened is uh, my my non essential basket has really grown now okay that is where it has really become such a big one now um uh, my mind has started looking into more of a value uh, 
um uh, there are definitely the digital i mean i have become a more of a digital omni channel okay nevertheless i am an agency head there uh, but the way i started interacting with my corner store uh, is all digital you know i, I started uh, ordering things for uh, things on my whatsapp okay so that has really happened and lots of stuff which is happening on that way uh, very interesting thing has happened uh, shock to loyalty uh so there is a i was so loyal to some of the brands um, uh, including my bourbon okay i mean i will that biscuit i will only buy from a particular uh, brand only okay nothing else and suddenly when i thought when i saw that it's not available i started experimenting with some of these other brands uh, my choices have changed my absolutely has changed uh and definitely i think um, i'm looking for convenience okay if these are the things which me as a consumer happening then i'm quite sure uh, these are the things uh, which my customers uh, or a brands uh, for whom we manage their accounts would also be looking for so this is this is exactly uh, started playing up on my mind a lot okay ki uh, how do we make sure that how do we make sure that he, uh, we as an agency start actually put this consumer changes on the table and say that this is exactly what probably my customers will be looking into me am i uh, is, is the you know the all these years some of the brands which are there with us uh, you know how do i make sure that uh, we start helping them on that so what we started doing at the early stage again uh, going back to the mckinsey model the first uh, thing that we worked on to is along with the client is that we started resolving those you know that work from home uh, having the issues uh, you know making sure that accepting that zooms and meets and uh, regular calls and uh, uh, making sure that all those eight teams working together so you know started the first week or first two weeks were about that making sure that resolving those issues once that got uh, got into place probably that is where the phase of resilience started for us wherein along with the client wherein uh you know our relationship started getting tested our ways of working getting uh, started getting tested uh, lots of stuff you know and these are the these are the three four weeks where in uh, making just aware that we have to be resilient and of course as a as an agency you would say uh, when the, the uh, when the media is really going down how do i ma uh, manage my ca cash flows well how do i make sure that uh, you know we do uh, a proper um, negotiations with my partners okay so all that started happening and after around one and a half months that is where i have seen myself with we as a company and me as a uh, you know agency to uh, many of our brands is that returns started happening there are so many people actually sitting there and saying that now when the return happens okay the question was always when okay but when the return happens how the world would be what are the things that i need to work on which are the things probably i had been saying that i have to do it earlier but i couldn't do it can i do something about it okay can we put a plan together can i have that agile methods of doing it and that was the phase which we really enjoyed there are many clients many uh, accounts in which we could actually go back and start looking into we had of course we have a time uh, efficiencies have gone up uh, there are other negative points of work, work from home also but return is something which uh, which is happening and now when probably we are seeing a bit of end of the uh you know sort of a tunnel thing and a bit of light seeing we are seeing that light there and the end of the tunnel that is the time uh, many of many of us are talking about reimagining okay what can i do different with all the changes which ron you were talking about and some of the other things that i have talked about this is the time uh, people have actually started putting to i have seen some of uh, some of my customers actually changing uh fundamentally the way they uh, have the digital touch points one of my customer is a you know very uh Uh, i would say they are into consumer durable and heavily rely relied on um uh, you know direct sales the way they change over last 3 to 4 months where in so many digital touch points got introduced it's amazing okay so that is where probably reimagination re and reforms which are happening so if i put all those four months together from me as a consumer and probably those five are model so it seems to be a time uh, well spent to 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 build things for the future and i am quite sure uh, most of my uh, most of us have changed that way you know me as a consumer we as a uh, you know brand everywhere that, uh, which is which is what i actually see there now so that's from my side uh, mm -hmm. the way we have sort of responded to uh, the covid situation thank you it sounds also like you were spending more time with your clients than you than you would expect um under these conditions and yeah definitely and definitely true uh, i think i think one good thing has happened is that um, uh, the calendars have become very efficient um, uh, everyone seems to be following calendar well and it also means is that uh, there is a good amount of time to brood over things think over things putting together frameworks well spending more times with the with clients okay it seems to be working that way very well yes 
Okay, thank you. Um, next, uh, let's go to Michelle. Are, are you there? Yep. Okay, okay. Ron. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks, Ron. Uh, so let me first introduce myself. My name is Vishal Chinchankar. I head uh, Madison Digital. Madison has been a 30 year old homegrown Indian agency, and we've been pioneers in the traditional media over a period of time. I think digital. Uh, has been up on upswing for us, and you know our philosophy is clearly simple. It's it's not about just a single media that works hard. It's always a media mix or an integrated media that works much much harder. And for me, marketing is clearly all about funnel marketing. You know, there's top of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. While we know that there's a great television medium which really operates on building the awareness on your top of the funnel and your digital, which sort of uh, you know, addresses largely also to the bottom of the funnel when it comes to laser sharp uh, targeting. You know, somewhere I clearly feel that digital is also ha has a role, not just in bottom, but also on top of the funnel, you know, in that consumer journey. And, and, and to talk about the kind of framework that we use or our playbook that we have, uh, we clearly believe in uh, something called as outcomes planning. Now, no, and I'll come to your point later as to how have we, uh, sort of, you know, navigated through this troubled waters in COVID and, and what are the kind of solution that we've got through. But before that, let me just talk about what is outcomes planning for us. So uh, clearly, given the objective, we we'll look at what is the brands and I'm going to and, and I'm going to talk more from a brand's point of view. And thanks to Sat for giving a consumer perspective and, and Shaker for the three C's. I think they are pretty valuable. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a perspective how brands would love to think and how brands would really want to navigate through these things. So our outcomes planning uh, clearly, uh, you know, is, is a framework which starts from an encounter to explore, to experience and engage, right? So you know where the consumers are and where are you going to encounter with them, your brands going to encounter. How are you going to explore these consumers? What is the experience, you know, when they engage, when they buy a product or when they interact with your product or your brand? And how do you, as a brand, how do you engage with them for throughout the life? Now, now, when you look at these sort of a framework, you clearly know what's really working hard for you. You know, and, and the, during, this gay, during this COVID period, we've all seen the, the kind of numbers that have really grown from geo or the OTT play going up and so is the gaming and most of the other digital uh, sort of uh, click and motor or click brick and click sort of businesses going up. So I think we, we go behind where the audiences are and that's where the, that's where the cream lies. Uh, you know, honestly speaking, uh, before I even talk about how we sort of, uh, you know, really make sure that there's a massive ROI and there isn't a much leakage, Clearly, there is two areas that needs to be addressed. One is how is it that as an agency, you're bringing in a lot more efficiency into medium? How is it effective for the brand, right? And when I say efficiencies, and I'm clearly going to draw a parallel with what television as a medium is, because end of the day, medium is a medium, whether it's digital or television, because the consumer is the same, the screen may be different, right? And uh, you, you really want to address things like, is, is this medium really efficient? Is this really giving you the right price? Are you really comparing it with the GRPs and the CPRPs of what the other medium is giving? Now that, that becomes another area. So are digital marketers really working and optimizing campaigns to the level to get a better efficiency or a better ROI? Now that's an area that we've, very, we've been very cautious about and we sort of really do a very close view on that, a microscopic view. Uh, secondly, eff effectiveness. Is it, you know, is, is what media you buy or the way you sort of reach out to your consumer, is it effective? Is it impactful? Is it just giving you and addressing your number of leads or clicks or your views or is it also creating an impact, right? Clearly there's, there is a challenge in our digital ecosystem with walled gardens, with the duopoly sitting in, you know, these guys, they don't really talk to each other. That may remain a you know, big challenge for us in this industry, but the need of the R is single currency. You really need to view them all with a single lens. Uh, I don't want to go on the, on the direction of TV side, but clearly, even if I had to touch upon things like there is a bar 
which sort of gives a single view currency. If that was made available more on digital, you know, the wastage or the leakage would have been much, much minimal. Today, when you plan on a frequency on a Google at an X and a Facebook at the Y, if you, you know, combine them together, you probably would have an effective uh, right frequency to reach out to that same consumer. So I think these are some of the nuts and bolts that we sort of deal with to make sure that there is efficiencies and effectiveness to every media that we sort of uh, you know, market and, and get the brands aligned. What have we seen during this COVID is uh, the data points that really hit us, whether increase in the viewership on OTTs or YouTubes or searches, the, you know, category searches, or maybe certain traffic uh, and interest level genre coming out of Facebook. We've sort of tried capturing these, uh, you know, audiences or these research data insights and smartly trying to utilize them to make sure that, you know, we bring in those sort of efficiencies and effectiveness for our brands. And uh, last but not least, uh, obviously, I think that may lead to a next question, but I'm just going to touch upon it, which is, you know, digital as a nature of the business it is will still be seen as a bit of a black hole because there is a viability issue and there is a ad fraud which needs to obviously mitigate uh, uh, the invalid traffic or you know the completion views and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, these are three broad areas which I would say uh, we've been dealing with during this uh, period and trying to get something out of it more positive for advertisers. We've seen a far better ROI using these tools. Yeah, Ron. I was trying. I was trying to unmute on the uh, the small thumbnail of my image, and it doesn't do that. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, wow, that was an intense journey uh, in the last five minutes, and and thank you for that. Uh, thank you for all the three speakers. We've we've got to get to uh, Batam next, um, but this is really powerful, uh, at least from my perspective and I hope for the audience perspective, that you were using this time, all three of you were using this time to get better at what you've been doing. You didn't take a time out. You didn't get distracted by what was happening around you. You didn't lose your energy. You, you, you just did more of what you were doing and you got better at doing it. So, so thank you for those insights. Um, but Tom, I, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, please. Um, you're up next, I hope you're ready. Uh, thanks, Ron. Um, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Gautam. Um, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm a VP Technology at Performix, uh, which is part of Publicis Group. Uh, I'm here with Performix for about last four years. Um, I also lead the own media team practice, uh, which includes a great set of people from tech and creative background. Um, and it's a great, great pleasure to work with the team that I have. Um, and I'm extremely honored to be part of such a esteemed panel. And thanks Exchange for Media and uh, um, Infiltrate teams for their plat for the platform and the opportunity to share my views. So um, the, the main point, uh, the realization that um, me as well as everyone has uh, realized in the marketing space is they have to accelerate to digital. Uh, the organizations have to advance their digital transformation or e-com plans uh, by a certain amount. So in, in, in actually in some cases, at least by a few years, uh, what they were planning to go by 2025, they, are, they have to do it right now, right here, right now kind of thing, right? So just to give an example, uh, so basically uh, one of my client uh, is, uh, is in healthcare business. Uh, basically they have a, a chain of hospitals uh, operating out of multiple cities and after this lockdown, um, effectively, uh, they, they, were, uh, they had to comply with lockdown, COVID-19 uh, lockdown regulations. Uh, the OPDs were kind of uh, switched off and uh, they had to, uh, the people had to reduce unnecessary visits to hospitals. They had, uh, means, uh, our, our prime minister has uh, clearly mentioned uh, to people, ask people to uh, consult the doctors over the call instead of actually in-person visit, and it's a, a proper uh, uh, it's a proper uh, norm that needs to be followed in, henceforth, hence uh, onwards, right? So, uh, 
the challenge for the, the that brand is like uh, they had to uh, comply with the covid 19 uh, they had to continue to provide the essential services to people and uh, then the fallback uh, for those opds were uh, kind of call centers but again the call centers were forced to operate at uh, less than one third part of their uh, actual strength right so the even the call centers uh, needs to be uh, relieved of the sudden stress so basically uh, we had to uh, start up the online uh, 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 video consultation uh, system for the client in a less than a week kind of thing and effectively uh, the the video consultation was always on the cards for the client and uh, but that it was supposed to go live by early next year or some kind of thing but uh, they had to completely advance this uh, plan and i believe most of the uh, healthcare brands the hospitals they have started with the video consultation so that, that's just an example of the drastic pivot that uh, every every organization has to undergo because of the covid and uh, effectively when uh, my client is uh, getting into pivot uh, i have to also get into pivot right so to serve the client uh, even we had to uh, completely change our way of working or uh, approach to the client the main uh, focus or uh, the main observation that i have seen in my team is uh, instead of uh, people working in a team uh, the collaboration and the effective decision making lying with a single uh, resource has been just an amazing so uh, i have seen people who standing up and uh, working uh, and taking their decisions and man managing the client so basically uh, earlier the client interactions were used to happen at uh, the client servicing person and the uh, marketing uh, people from the client end uh, right now what i have seen is uh, most of my team members they directly talk to the their counterpart so uh, it's not just between uh, client servicing and the marketing interaction uh, we have seen interaction between the technology uh, the developer and uh, it team at the client's place uh, we have seen the conversations between a marketing person and a creative person we have seen uh, conversations between uh, the clients other vendors and us directly so basically the hosting partners of the client uh, their other vendors who are uh, Uh, serving the client on different capacities uh, we are also interacting with those direct uh, people directly so that that's uh, one of the biggest uh, change that i can see in the way we work way we interact with the uh, the organizations the clients uh, i think that that's just the biggest uh, change that i have seen in my team uh, and effectively right now i'll just say it's a, it's a the re season effectively the post covid lockdown situation uh, we, we are uh, in a reboot stage right so uh, just like a, a computer or mobile device a quick reboot is required and it's it's uh, highly desired by everyone right so if one misses a signal from the consumer it is not just an opportunity lost but a missed chance to make a lasting impression and earn loyalty from the audience uh, the audience uh, can be a prospect uh, a happy or unhappy customer that is either your customer or your competitor's customer so open or close that influencers policy makers really just about anyone and i think uh, martech uh, the marketing technology is the precise thing that will help the organizations in catching that signal and acting on it uh effectively uh when you say uh, marketing technology it's uh, effectively it's evolving it's maturing uh we can see that it can help the organizations in many aspects uh, right from the most basic lead conversion to complex ones like managing uh, multi dimensional uh, complex ones um multi dimensional uh, relationships through omni channel strategy uh effectively technology is just an enabler uh, it enables vision strategy creativity creativity to execute across multiple channels uh, one cannot just throw technology at the problem and expect it to solve on on its own the other key components like data analytics um, marketing strategy agile execution and the talent that is the right people at the right places doing right things they have to work along with the technology to make it work so 
effectively to solve the problem they all these things all these uh, building blocks come together they need to come together to work in tandem and resolve the issue for the client and i think that that's the mantra for the post covid situation that's how we can effectively reboot quickly and get the attention of the clients audience and everyone yep okay that's a powerful story and um, it's a situation where failure was not an option you had uh, human lives uh, on the line that you had to help assist uh, through this um, online uh, system that you set up overnight in a week um, thanks for sharing that story i'm going to bring uh, lalit into the uh, discussion now he's just joined us uh, just in time um, we've gone through the the first question and you're 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 up next but to give you some context we're seeing that uh, from every point of view among all of the, the uh, panelists together, that during the, the last few months, um, the agencies uh, and the leadership have gotten closer to the client organization, work more closely together, and have gotten closer in their focus on the customer as well, um, which is really encouraging. It's, it's very inspiring. And I think it's something that you will all carry um, into the period of time post COVID. So congratulations to all of you. But Lee, that's, that's the, uh, the setup for your uh, five minute answer to the same question. How um, have you worked with your digital playbook to, to embrace the change, to embrace the challenges and, and to stay ahead of the curve? Right. Uh, sorry guys to join uh, late. I had a client meeting uh, which just got over. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, first round, you know, uh, you know, just, just to, uh, just to correct, uh, a statement you made, right. We were always very close to our clients. Uh, we've always been working very closely with our clients. And I think that's how as agencies, uh, we prospered, right. Uh, because if you can't work closely as partners to the client and takes all the accolades as well as uh, big bats along with it, then there's no, uh, no service business that can really survive. But uh, what's happened with COVID though is that, uh, you know, the client's priorities have, have, have changed quite a bit, right? And suddenly uh, everything that they do from a digital perspective or from a data nomadic perspective has become a, 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 a very high priority, right? Uh, you know, we've worked across client segments, you know, from BFSI to FMCG to, you know, uh, to, uh, to retail and to all kinds of industries, right? And clearly one common thread that we've seen across is, 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 is this whole focus on saying, you know, how can I really get the best bang for my buck? Uh, you know, how can I use less marketing monies to really still meet my targets? Um, and clearly that's been one key uh, thread that we've really, uh, you know, seen with clients. Um, uh, you know, as targeted as digital marketing uh, and media would get in, right? Clearly you're still talking about acquiring all kinds of customers and not necessarily the customers who are, are who are your most profitable customers, right? And one conversation that we've seen happening across clients is, is talking about customer level profitability and clearly saying that who within my customer base is, is the most profitable customer for me. Uh, and clearly what that does is if you start looking at from a profitability lens, uh, it starts changing uh, every single way that you do marketing, right? We've always, we're all familiar with the, 80-20 rule where we said that 20% of a customer's drive 80% of the profits or 80% of the revenues. But if you if you if you just apply a filter of revenue uh, profits to that uh, equation, it becomes a 220 equation, right? Which means 20% of the customer actually drives 200% of your profits, which means the remaining 80% of the customer actually drive down your profitability. Now in times like these, when uh, you know you have lesser marketing monies, but at the same time every company still wants to meet their profit numbers because you, everybody is finding it difficult to meet revenue numbers. This customer level profitability conversation has become the core of uh, everything that is doing, that 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 uh, companies are looking at, and that is only possible um, if you start uh, looking at your whole uh, data stack, ad tech stack, mart tech stack, all to really come together. And, and build literally like a mad tech stack, uh, you know, which orchestrates this entire journey, which means not only are you trying to use uh, MarTech or CRM to really acquire, uh, to basically retain your current customers and grow them and cross sell and upsell to them, but you're also trying to acquire newer customers by getting your ad tech to talk to MarTech uh, and saying that, can I only focus on those profitable customer segments uh, through my advertisement 
uh, or through my ad dollars uh, so that i i only get those profitable customers uh, into the funnel so when i have lesser monies would i rather focus on getting all kinds of customers or only the profitable customer segments and that's become the one key uh, you know recommendation that we are taking across clients and we seeing a lot of uh, interest action on from a client perspective so one is to be able to look at customer level profitability and then trying to marry your ad tech and martech tech efforts to really put together uh, this cohesive uh, you know orchestration of of customer engagement customer retention and even new customer acquisition um and and that's one key flavor that we really taken across clients uh and literally creating a playbook around that okay lovely that 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 was excellent and wow you you did all that in in less than 5 minutes it seems um it's a good segue actually to the next and last question um in terms of time check we are a little bit stressed um we got like 20 minutes um so let me ask you guys uh to try to answer the next question more as a headline um and uh the question again is um what technology what what additional tools do you need um as you look at this changing uh consumer behavior that's going to be with us it was accelerated by the, the pandemic but the shift to to mobile um as the go to device um throughout the 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 customer journey through the purchase funnel as well So um let's if you don't mind let's go in the same order that we started with uh Shakar I'll give you the the first chance at bat on that one. Yeah so um so Ron it, it this also puts up a lot of stress before I answer that question there is no straight answer I I hope I have about 2 minutes to answer this. Uh there's no straight off question to this uh in the sense that when you are looking at Uh, i was also looking at some of the interesting questions which have been posted by in the q and a uh, panel uh, uh, some of them are saying that life is is it is it so myopic uh, yeah those are, those are very very tongue in cheek very interesting very intriguing questions i wish we had more time but i'll quickly jump to that uh, what's the tools what are the kind of stuff that i require one of the biggest challenges that we face as marketers or as agencies is about the fact is to find time for ourselves we are living in a world where there is a constant uh, pressure there is a higher freeze there is no headcounts being acquired new headcounts being acquired what do we do where do i find time when especially when the work has actually tripled uh, people who are actually spending upwards of 10 hours are spending upwards of 14 to 15 hours and as prasad has rightly put everything is calendarized okay even then you you need to make that justification what do we do one of the things is we need to look at it internally within as marketers as clients and ag- as agencies to transform our operational processes which is very critical because i have to may put a stop to productivity i think somewhere lalit also spoke about the profitability bit which is equally important for us as service providers to ensure that we create some kind of a process for our digital transformation this when when i talk of it getting after all the iterative stuff to be automated and also make sure that we face the uh, employee questions saying that their jobs are safe it's not going to happen that just you need to reskill properly so you need to first of all find time for yourself to make sure that you answer that entire question of changing uh, consumer behavior with the changing consumer behavior what i mean is uh, of course uh, we've spoke about vishal vishal also spoke about the fact that it's no longer linear it's it's a very funnel based marketing uh, everybody expects the roi at the end of the hour at at the immediate turn of the button okay and it was never so uh, fair for digital marketers in any which ways so it's very very critical that we create such design processes to make sure that we shorten the product life cycle like for for instance if a person is actually looking for a toothpaste online he doesn't he doesn't essentially means that he is going to go through the entire funnel of oh this is a toothpaste and this is going to be an herbal toothpaste and this these are the benefits that i'm going to get and this is where i'm going to purchase this is my 
uh, you know longevity and it will also enable for the consumers to, or the client for that matter to calculate the entire lifetime it is life is not going to be so easy now life it's all very crunched so in order to make sure that we have three things here one is how do i make sure that i have uh, i transform my operation processes make sure that i reduce my grunt work automate those processes reduce my iterative stuff second bit is in terms of making sure that i create a design process for a faster collaboration to reduce the cycle in terms of my consumer life cycle so that a person looking for a product buys the product the call to action is very very critical there is no uh, two way approach to that and the third bit is third bit is of, of course everybody to themselves uh, if i am uh, Uh, i think prasad spoke about it briefly uh, especially when you work from home initial uh, thing is when uh, i go back one year back when uh, you you if a, an employee does tell you that i am going to work from home for one week you are quite skeptical now you are absolutely trust you have absolute trust about the fact that he is going to put it put his 100% yeah at least that has to be the start point it cannot be the start point cannot be that what is he doing at home okay do i have to use those monitoring tools to see what is the how is he clocking his time sheet and all those stuff so these three critical things one is look into your internal process second is shorten your life cycle third is as individuals are getting back and this is going to be new normal as the cliche goes how do we make sure that you organize yourself and let individuals gets more empowered yeah thank you very clear very clear Prasad, you're up next, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, Shekhar, I could uh, really uh, one of the thing that you saw, saw uh, said at the beginning with, with respect to time and trust and transform. Okay, so my takeaway definitely is what what the tools that you require is time for sure. Uh, talking about, I think um, around um, there is no one tool. Okay, I, I I know it can sound to be very cliched one. Okay, but there is no one tool. Uh, uh, from which your model that you take from uh, that aware to advocacy may be you know Kotler's model or Ida model or which your model that you will take. Uh, but consumer when uh, and it's again cliched that all of us know that uh, and uh, even Lalit talked about no customer you know for the customers customer no customer is uh, same. Okay, they are going to have a different uh, uh, you know. Uh, 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 CLV um, uh, that we are talking about, okay. But uh, in during that journey, uh, if really someone puts a gun on my head and say that what is it that you have to choose one, okay, then I would say give me something uh, which can I which I can actually help to uh, you know uh, measure things because if you can measure something that you can improve it. Um, major, may it be whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. I, like, I'll go really crazy about measuring everything so that I can improve that. But having said so, a bit of generic one, uh, multiple things, ad tech to market to personalization to measurement to insights to everything. But I will just go along with that journey of his, see what is he doing, and trying to get, use that tool. Okay, may it be ad tech, mad tech, mad tech, or whatever it is. Okay, but one tool, something help me to measure. so that i can improve uh, you know sort of efficiency of that anything help me improve it by measuring it okay thank you excellent um now to shaw please two minutes yeah thanks ron uh you know i'm going to uh, do a very narrow view on tools uh, and precise from a marketing perspective clearly from a marketing perspective i don't think uh, you know there are multiple tools that can really make you know you can't use multiple tools to make a huge difference you need to be very clear about what are the one or two finer tools that you want to really use to make sure that you have a sharp audiences coming into your uh, bottom of the funnel now there's enough and more ad tech and martech that's already been spoken about but just picking on those two words if i just had to classify these two precise tools called as a dmp and a cdp right you know you get the the dmp to really cohortize your audiences build in your funnel top of the line or middle of the funnel and then once it becomes your customer really use your cdp to really reengage a lot more better with that customer that effectively would give you a far far better roi i'm not looking at more media but you know once you reach the customer how is it that you're going to you know make sure that your return is much higher and these i think are very powerful tools Well said. Well said. Uh, Gautam, you're next. 
Uh, I'll, I'll go a bit generic uh, on this uh, instead of just a tool. So basically, the as a leader, the best tool that I have are my resources, my, my people, right? So at the end of the day, uh, it it's boils, all boils down to the people who are working with me. And and it has come to a, uh, it has highlighted this last few year, few months, few days, uh, completely highlighted the fact that uh, uh, nothing can beat a good resource or a good person who can handle a client, who can uh, do his job, who can co collaborate well with his colleagues. So obviously, uh, the thing that I or the tool that I would want to do, uh, want, want to have in my hand is a good collaboration that will em empower my uh, people, my, my team to uh, serve the client. So basically, uh, I've seen uh, my team who have, uh, who has been, always been a uh, have been a good good performers, but in these uh, last few months, the people who have been a good performers have been a bright star in the entire things. I've, I've met people who have completely taken over a complete project on their own. They did the coordination with the team uh, around them. They co coordinated with the clients team and the vendors of the clients. So obviously, yes, uh, the tool that will require is obviously the resources and the talent effectively. And anything that can import this talent to serve their, uh, to help them in their uh, mission, their, in their uh, work. So that, that's the one I'll take. I think you're highlighting the complexity that, that doesn't, it doesn't get easier. It just gets more complex. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Ali, you're last but not least, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, and you know, for me, actually, uh, you know, um, I would, re I really look at it from a very different lens, right? What the pandemic has done for us uh, at this stage is basically uh, change the way businesses work, change the way customers' uh, expectations, uh, you know, from the business. Uh, it's, and I think the core question or the core tool that I really like my clients to take and something that, again, you know, we've been working with clients is, is redefinition of customer centricity. And I think if you start re-looking at what does your business really mean for the customer and what can you and your business do for the customers in a time like this and how do you really rethink of the customer centricity for the business, I think that's one of the most critical important tools for the business, right? If I've been a retailer who's got offline stores, uh, suddenly I, my offline stores can't operate um, how do I give value to customers who are now so used to buying online? Uh, they're, they're buying from the Amazons, the Flipkarts of the world. So why should they buy from me? So what is the definition of customer centricity and why should customer and buy from me? Uh, you know, if, 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 if you're an electronics company, right? Similar definitions, right? Uh, you know, why should the customer buy my product versus some other product? And I think that definition and what am I, what, what is, what am I doing for them? Uh, uh, you know, especially in a time like this, uh, and is, is different, right? The rules of engagement have changed, and, and I think these behavioral changes are not just for short term. These are behavioral changes that will continue to be for long term. So I think it's time for organizations to go back to think about customer centricity and saying, what does my business mean for the customer, and what should I deliver to them, and how should I deliver to them? Um, and re-looking at that, uh, and rethinking about that, I think is one of the most critical things because that will define everything else, whether it's a data platform, whether it's a MarTech, whether it's, you know, ad tech, whether it's, you know, performance marketing, whatever else, right? Those are all enablers and those are easy to plug in. But I think key is that what does it mean to be customer centric? How do I deliver and engage with my customer is possibly the most critical tool for companies to think because this is not a short term uh, event. It's something that has changed the way businesses are doing businesses forever. And it's the right time for you to think, what am I for, the, for my customer and how do I engage and talk to my customer? I'm so glad that you brought this point up. This is one of the most important, profound points that an agency can address. And it's not easy. It's, it's, but you've, you've defined it in such an elegant way. I, I really appreciate what you've done there. And it's also something that we need to think deeply about to reactivate our economies, not only in India, but everywhere in the world. So, so thank you. That's a big contribution to this, this webinar. Um, it's been a great workout today. Uh, and I want to thank every one of the panelists for the great commentary, the great insights, the, the thoughts. 
um, it's all valuable. And, and I, I apologize that if you felt that we had to rush through this, um, but you were crystal clear, each and every one of you, and, and, and valuable. Um, we've got five minutes. We've got some questions that have been uh, um, asked from the audience. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask the organizers of this uh, webinar if they want to field any of those questions. Oh. Yeah, yeah, please. You can go ahead and ask it, Ron. I mean, if you want to. We have five minutes. Okay. So um, now I feel like I'm, I'm going to be editing. Uh, and um, okay, so this is, this is to Lali. It says, um, hang, I got to scroll down to get the whole comment. Okay, Lali is right. That's why customer clarity on what they want to convey, do for customers, and how do we engage. I don't know if that's a question or just a confirmation of your genius. I think it's a confirmation of your genius. I, I, I'm intrigued by this other question. Um, life didn't start in March with COVID. I don't know how true that is. I do realize the whole hog, I think I've got that right, change in, in every respective. My question to Prasad, okay, Prasad, get ready, is why are we so myopic? Are you, I don't think we're so myopic, but that's just my, my bias. Um, is this the end of life? Maybe the end of life as we know it, maybe it's gonna change. I'm, I'm not gonna answer for you. This time too shall pass and be, I guess, just this letter B, it doesn't say B, E or whatever. Prasad, what you, you're being the, the f f philosopher, scholar for this panel today. I've just appointed you that. Um, how do you answer this question? I, uh, I don't know how to answer it, but definitely uh, it is uh, it is definitely not the end of life for sure. I think there is, uh, as I was saying also, there are a lot of good things which have happened. And today morning I was talking to someone and I really said is that the whole narrative that we have um, uh, in terms of every day morning that we get up and uh, you know see a lot of negative things in our life and the news or a WhatsApp or a all sort of stuff. I think there are, I'm quite sure we can uh, build those two positives in and around that. And then probably if you add all that, then there's a lot of positivity. I don't think every, every person, every client, every person that I have come across, uh, probably uh, they have definitely learned a lot out of uh, uh, the situations. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think it, is, it was more of a uh, rumination, I would say, uh, that question, but not a question as such. Someone wanted to reconfirm uh, that, uh, you know, uh, there are more to life. Yes, there is more to life. Uh, yes, we have evolved. Yes, things will be good. Yes, everything will be fine. One year down the line, probably all of us will be looking back and saying that, you know, uh, that time we really spent a good amount of time with family, uh, you know, did a lot of stuff probably we wanted to do in life. Uh, you know, change our businesses, everything. So it was more of a rumination. It was not a question, I suppose. Spoken like a true scholar. Sorry. Uh, Ra, are you, are you shutting us down now? Or are, you, are you just... No, 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 no. I just want to just come in that there's another question that I've got from Facebook. Uh, I, it's, this is for everyone and everyone can answer this. Uh, okay, good. Go for uh, it. In the current situation, what's your advice for lifestyle brands? Anyone can take this question. Anyone, except me. <laughs> it's a, I, I don't know, it, it's a, see, uh, I wish I had a crystal ball there and look into future, but um, I think, um, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, the non-essential has really, the basket has really grown there. But at the same time, how human beings uh, behave could be very different. I would say stay there see what things are changing. Um, don't, don't think that this is the end of it. Or this is how people will behave. You never know one month down the line, things could be very, very different. Uh, uh, you know, the herd immunity will set in, a peak will be going over, everything will happen. So uh, this is too early. It's just, I would say one of the things is that stay there, uh, keep watching what your consumer is doing, uh, keep listening to them, uh, keep doing things good for them. That's what I would say. I don't have a crystal ball on that. Definitely not. I, I think that's a, a very good place to, to wrap things up today. Um, personally, it's been a great privilege to work with each of you. Um, it's been exciting. I've learned a great deal, I have to say. I thought I knew pretty much, but I've learned quite a lot on this one-hour session. So thank you for that. Um, 
And I hope we can do this again. I hope we can make this into a series. I, I think there's so much value you bring to your clients, but also to the society that we, we live in and, and how we have to move forward together. So thank you again. Thanks to the organizers as well. And Infiltrate, the sponsor. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Stay, safe. stay safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.